what's up everybody 915 mang here doing a video today in the past videos i've been showing you anemones i've been showing you but i have too many of them and i want to do a video today of anemones and enemy care and i'm going to give you an update on the tank in general i'm still going to keep two anemones in my tank i have a total of eight guys eight anemones um as you can see the, these are rose bubble tip anemones. The colors on them are awesome. Uh, right now I'm shooting it with no filter on at all. You can see the pinks, the reds in it, the greens. It's an awesome anemone. Like I said, I have a total of eight. I'm taking six to the store and I'm gonna keep two in my uh, reef tank. The reef tank that I have is a 150, but having a total of six is just too many. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. With a total of six anemones that I'm taking to the store, I could have easily fragged them, cut them in half uh, with the razor. Um, but you know what? I did that in the past and I've never done it again because I felt so bad doing it. And I chopped them up in my last video where I did it. I did, I just fragged one anemone and I felt bad because it wasn't a clean cut. But these guys, they naturally split themselves. You can go ahead and cut them up and sell them if you'd like but I wouldn't recommend that just because uh, they're they're animals and uh, you'll feel bad if you don't do a good job like I did part of reefing is awesome when you have a clownfish actually host your anemone for the first time it's awesome to watch uh, and that's the only reason I'm keeping an anemone in here is because of the clownfish I just don't want to take away its home you have a symbiotic relationship the clownfish feeds the anemone and the anemone takes care of my clownfish um i'm gonna keep this one front and center and all the other ones i'm gonna take out so let's go ahead and talk about anemone care if you're in the market for an anemone you're getting started out into reefing this is a perfect video for you because i'm gonna give you some pointers first pointer that i'm gonna give you is do not get an anemone unless your tank is at least six months old um, because if you get a brand new tank and you're starting off the cycle your cycle is cleared and all that once you have finally made it past the six month mark then you can go ahead and order yourself an anemone you can get them online make sure you get them from someplace that has a good reputation or if you go to the LFS and your local fish store has some make sure you inspect them if they look shriveled up and they stink and they look like they're falling apart they're melted do not get them all you're gonna do is cause a big problem in your tank um, some of the stores even if it's a good deal and you think you can nurse it back you probably are taking a big risk if it looks like it is torn if it has an open gaping mouth where you can see inside of the anemone walk away if another thing to uh, consider is inspect the foot of the anemone. I want you to inspect the foot in the, of the anemone make sure there's no tears or anything like that. Um, surprisingly anemones are resilient they'll bounce back but these are just things for you to uh, think about and consider. When I fragged my anemone I did a terrible job I felt so bad and never ever did it again but my anemones both of them survived and uh, I ended up selling those so these are things to consider to think about and especially if you're gonna add them to your established reef tank not only that but these are living animals they're gonna have a mind of their own as you can see in this tank it's a mixed reef tank but they'll go ahead and sting other corals not gonna kill my corals immediately but if you're like me you'll do it tomorrow and before you know it, that coral that, that an enemy reached out and stung is now dead. So these th animals are going to move all over your tank because they're going to find the perfect flow, the, the light that they want. And as you can see, in my own reef tank, I have too many anemones. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them from my tank and just keep two because I want to keep one for my uh, cl clownfish. And the other anemone I just couldn't reach and I don't want to hurt it. Now moving right along into the next section of the video, what do you do when you have too many anemones? How do you take the anemones out 
of the aquarium without hurting your your uh, other corals and without hurting these animals. Um, the, I'm going to show you how to do that. So make sure you stick around and watch this video. Number one, the turkey baster. Everybody has a turkey baster. These are great to blow water, jets of water into your live rock to get all the all the excess food, sand, detritus, things like that. But it's not strong enough to blow jets of water at the foot of an enemy. So what I got here is the sea squirt. It's basically a target feeding um, turkey baster. It can reach all the way down into your tank with the corals and feed the corals that you want. But I'm interested in it because of the jets of water that it can produce. So the goal is to get your turkey baster or the Camp Marine coral feeder and you aim it at the anemone's foot. What you're trying to do is squirt water at the anemone's foot and then the anemone's foot will start to peel away from the live rock. Especially rose bubble tip anemones that they attach themselves to live rock. It's a long process. It will take a little bit of time for each anemone. Just get comfortable and have some patience and just keep using that uh, turkey baster. If you have another method, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it because like I said, I still have two anemones in my reef tank. Another thing to consider if you're gonna get an anemone, the size of your aquarium. I don't recommend getting an anemone, a rose bubble tip anemone, if you have like a nano. I think the kind of anemones if you want to get one is those rock nems because they pretty much stick to the sand. Once you get rose bubble tip anemones, they move around in the rock, they'll settle themselves in and then you have to move your corals and adjust to them. Uh, otherwise they're going to sting them as you can see on this LPS. Not only my LPS but they do sting my digis right there. As you can see the digi is starting to turn a little bit white there. And that's just from me being, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the next day. If they sting your coral, it's not going to kill it immediately. But if you don't get to it, it's going to be a problem and your corals are going to suffer. So I hope this video has helped you out. Let me know what you think on the comments below. What's your method of removing anemones? Do you guys even frag anemones? Um, and do you guys feel bad if you do frag anemones? These ones are going to go to the store to the coral reef for some store credit there are six in total and i'm just going to use that store credit for like fish food or towards you know zoas or something like that i do want to get some more fish so hopefully i can use a little bit of store credit towards some fish guys if you're like me you could sell these anemones locally to your reefing buddies you don't have to sell them for very much just imagine $30 times 6. That's a good chunk of change for some fish goodies. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Hope you guys have a good day. Let me know what your thoughts are. And you guys take care. Like and subscribe, guys.